uh, U.S. journalist Brent Renault killed in Ukraine. Local police officials and witnesses said the documentary filmmaker was shot near Kiev. Now, um, I'm I'm very doubtful about the official story behind this shooting. They are saying, but they are not providing any sort of support or evidence for this, they are saying the Russians shot him. But as we learned that he was shot, and he's an American journalist, however, he was carrying around um he was carrying around the NYT press card, which was an expired press card, or maybe not expired, but certainly very old and that the NYT had been giving him for a totally different project. In other words, he was not in Ukraine to make his job as part of the New York Times. It was not an assignment from the New York Times. He was working there to make a documentary that he wanted to film. Uh, he was a photograph and a filmmaker of some kind. He was capturing videos in tense situation, that kind of stuff. And we have an official statement on the Ukraine side that this guy got shot at a checkpoint uh, in a car because he was, car he was carrying his stuff in a civilian car and he had gotten into a car of someone who said, I can carry you between this place and this place. He wanted to film some more of the refugees being evacuated. And... He ended up be being shot by people from a shot for, from a checkpoint. Now, we've seen journalists being shot at by checkpoints, and last time it was believed that it was a Ukrainian checkpoint that was firing on the journalist. At least uh, that's what I concluded based on the available evidence and the beliefs of the people at the, the site of the shooting. However, in this case. Uh, Jan Miles Chongs publishes an interesting tweet about this. He says, Looks like he got killed by Ukrainians because they suspected he was spying for Russia and giving away Ukrainian troop movements. Because right after this event, Andreas Haas publishes, The mayor of Irpin said that journalists will be denied access to the settlement from tomorrow According to him, media representatives are filming soldiers and revealing the location of the positions of the armed forces of Ukraine. Very interesting that they come out right after the death of this American journalist. And they're like, yeah, it's a big problem, journalists. They're, we're going to stop having journalists pass. And you're trying to make me believe that he got shot by a Russian checkpoint? first. This happened in Irpin, Kiev, and the pro-Ukrainian people for many days now have been rooting, oh, it's amazing how we're, we're kicking the Russians out of Irpin. So you're going to make me believe that while they are fighting the Russians out of Irpin, and successfully doing so according to their own statement, that there are Russian checkpoints in Irpin. And Jan Maj Chongs was pointing out uh, on on Twitter that there are no Russian checkpoints known in Irpin. There are all, uh, all there is is a Ukrainian checkpoint. So you have <coughs> the fact that as far as we know Irpin is under the control, it's a contested control but is largely under the control of the Ukrainian army still because it's a suburb or it's at a certain distance from Kiev but not far from it. Uh, it was a position that was getting shot by artillery for many days now. So it's a position that the Russians are not in. They are shooting at it from the sky and from a distance. And you're going to tell me that the Russian forces are those who killed through bullets at the checkpoint in Irpin, the, the American journalist. I don't believe it. I think we're getting bullshitted here. And look at his partner who survived the assault and he's telling the story of what happened. Now at this point this guy didn't know for sure that his partner uh, Brent Renault was dead. Here's his explanation of what happened. 
We're going to film other refugees leaving, mm -hmm. and we got onto a car. Somebody offered to take us to the other bridge, and we crossed a checkpoint, and they start shooting at us. Um, so the driver turned around, and they kept shooting. It's two of us. My friend is Brent Renault, and he's been shot and left behind. So he's not saying it's a Russian che checkpoint. So very bizarre uh, circumstances here. It is my impression that this guy is not convinced it was a Russian checkpoint, at least he's not affirming it positively in his statement. And so it seems that it's a product of the Ukrainian army propaganda and their release that, uh, that this happened due to the Russians. Um, so I'm, uh, I'm going to wait before developing a final judgment, but something tells me that we are getting some things are being hidden from us here i'm not satisfied by the official statement or the official story and as far as the evidence that i'm looking at and the first and witness that is him he doesn't seem to be uh, saying that it's a russian checkpoint and it would be surprising in a ways to already have a russian checkpoint in a place that is largely controlled by ukrainians and that, I mean, if it was a shelling, I might believe it, that it was the Russian. But it's not a shelling. This guy, these people got shot uh, by uh, weaponry, like uh, guns. So uh, we're going to wait. Perhaps it's the Russian, but for now, I don't believe it. <coughs> uh, Brent uh, Renault didn't have much detail about himself on Twitter. I, I, I was looking at his Twitter account. It was a very small Twitter account, opened in July 2011. Uh, he was pro-vaccine, got my second vaccine shot today, and he was interviewing and going around the world making pictures, photography, videos. Um, was very much pro-vaccine. There are lots of comments that are pro-nurse, pro, um, pro-COVID interventionism kind of stuff. So he is now dead, and it is the first, uh, I believe, the first, is it the first American victim? <coughs> At least known to be American. Um, was it a clever thing to be passing checkpoints with a 2015 New York Times cards? I don't think it was particularly clever. Uh, I think in a, particularly in a society like Ukraine, where the suspicions of saboteurs and Russian agents are omnipresent for anyone who has something weird about him, uh, carrying an old card on an assignment that he was not that this card was not designed for, that was not very smart. And it may be what triggered the checkpoint, where, whether it was a Russian or Ukrainian checkpoint, it may be what tr triggered them to start thinking, oh my God, maybe he's a spy. And I had been denunciating this attitude on the Ukraine side to say everyone is a potential saboteur. I mean, this will lead your soldiers to shoot people who are innocent. Uh, the New York Times has, uh, has uh, insisted that Brent Reno's death, uh, they are saddened by it, but that he did not contribute, he contributed to the New York Times many years ago. And although he had contributed to the Times in the past, most recently in 2015, he was not on assignment for any desk at the Times in Ukraine. Early reports that he worked for the Times circulated because he was wearing a Times press badge that had been issued for, for an assignment many years ago. So he, he was not working on the, on the New York Times uh, work. You know, he was not dedicated to serving the New York Times in Ukraine. Thank you for watching this clip. This is the CACA Remember to like and subscribe.